Yes, sir. Hey, and you know something? Uh, we, we tend to think this way. If we had money, everything would be all right. But the millionaires are set up all night and they're more of themselves sick. Oh, we're trying to make another one. We're afraid they're going to raise what they got. Right? That's why I think they'll just be content with what you got. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, you ought to be, you know, am I going? All right. Welcome to our class. We just, we just really got started. So glad to have you joining in Facebook Live. Let everybody give everybody a good hand. That's watching us on Facebook this morning. Talking on, uh, the fear of the fear of the father. Fear is 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 lethal to us as par paralysis of the brain. It makes our thoughts become arthritic and our memory sluggish. It is the kind of feeling that makes a graceful person stumble up the stairs in a crowd. You know what I mean? The thing that makes the articulate stutter and the and the ryth rhythmic become spastic. Uh, uh, I, I, I love to watch, uh, or I love to listen to Jerry Clower. Anybody ever heard of Jerry Clower? I love to listen to him. And he said he was somewhere, and this guy came in and he had a list. And he walked up to the guy that was one of his guys. And he said, I'm adding you to the main, and to the list of folk that I whoop. He said, I'm mad, and I whoop folk. And he said, okay. So he just walked out. So it kind of scared the boy a little bit. He said, oh, what's that fellow guy? I ain't about what he said. He said, you know, I got to think about it. He can't fool me. He said, you used to be afraid of him. He said, I walked over and he said, hey, buddy. He said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, you can't walk me. He said, well, let me mark you off on this. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to think with me. The enemy wants to play on your mind to make you worry about things that is probably never going to happen anyway. You know, let me give you this. Here's what's on our mind right now. Either way it goes, it's going to be trouble. We understand that. But you know what? God already, he's already going to make the grace to get us through the trouble that's in our nation. Amen. Amen. He already knows what he's going to do. He's not wringing his hands and wondering. And the problem that you and I have is the not knowing. When we don't know, we worry. Right? Right. And I, and I always throw myself back into this. And God always has provided a big God and provide Hey, listen, I'm not against it. If you want me to do today, prefer just help yourself. Right? You're going to have some problems getting some shells as of lately, I would say. Probably can't find nothing. Right? And I know this is going to be true, but I'm going to Ron Shelton. That's all I can say. The Bible is going to Ron Shelton. Praise the Lord for Ron Shelton. Amen? But I want you to understand with me. Amen? It don't matter if you got all the food and all the money and all the gold and all the bullets and all the guns. If you put your faith in that, then you're messed up in Yeah, I mean. Hey, and uh, uh, I see all these preachers on our sit, uh, selling these uh, buckets of food the last 25 years. You can survive through the tribulation. Why don't we just preach the gospel, get them ready when the rapture takes place? They're going to the rapture. Let, let, let somebody else have any buckets of food that you don't want to eat no way. And the problem is for us is we want, we want to know what's going to happen next. Do we not? And I'm, I'm, like, I'm like this right here. I, I want to know so much so to the, to the point and to the fact that I will try to hurry up the process because I want to see and I want to know what's fixing to happen. And then, and, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then I become almost a year ago when he said I got it again. And, I, and he said, I'm better again. I said, then what are you worried about? You haven't been it twice. Right? I don't know what you're going to have to face. And you don't know what I'm going to have to face. But I know this. God has got a good track record. I, I mean, he's got a good one. Amen. Somebody said, you know how big it is? They looked up at a great big giant. And he said, the God that brought me out from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will save me from this COVID. Right. I didn't want to say it, but that's what he meant. Yeah. Right? And, and can I just tell you this? You have an appointed time on this earth. Somebody said, well, I understand that. Well, if it's not your appointed time, it don't matter what you got. I see people, they open them up, and they was, and they was absolutely eat up with cancer. Sold them up and said, there's nothing we can do 30 years later. Still what happened? It wasn't their time 
You're not leaving until it's your time, sweetheart. You will not leave until God is finished with you. I want you, I want to declare to you today that the devil cannot destroy what God has anointed and called and purposed in the earth. He can't do it. He can't do it. He like and you know what? Here's how he can win the line battle. He comes to you like he did to Eve in the garden and said, Hath God said? And he begins to make you doubt the validity of God's word. And as you begin to doubt what God has already said, then the Bible said, He that doubteth is damned already. And as a man thinks in his heart, so shall be in him. So if you think you're going to die of the COVID, tell me, write me down some good scripture so I can preach of your funeral with and tell everybody how you was a good person, but you were scared to death of the COVID. I'm not saying it ain't real. I'm not taking it away from it. I'm just saying fully on fear. I'm over it. I'm over listening to all the devil. If I listened to the devil, I wouldn't even be the pastor here. I stood back there in that corner and cried, and the devil said, you ain't got enough servants to do six months. He was right. I didn't. I didn't know it. If, if I didn't know I was going to be here this long, I, I would have really passed out. He said, you ain't got to say. I mean, it's been all these years and I'm still getting sermons. I wonder how that works. You're going to get fired. Well, God's got a better job for you. It's according to whose report you want to believe. Do you trust the Lord and know that God is on your side and God is for you, greater seed that's in you? Or do you try yourself to make everything happen and you are your own God? Do you sit on the throne of your own heart and you're going to take care of all your affairs? Well, I love people trying to do that. Because God just absolutely shows them they're not in control. Alright? Alright, let me see if I can move. Uh, he says, to me there is no fear like the fear of the innocent. This is the fear of a child who walks in, in a dark basement to find the light switch far from reach. And every mop bucket becomes a sinister, sleazy creature whose cold breath lurks upon the necks of the little apprentice. I can remember moments as a child when I thought my heart had turned in, uh, into an African tom-tom that was being beaten by an insane musician who determined the beating would soon break through my chest like a bursting of a flood in Gore's Down. You know something? I get, I was people, I couldn't give a hundred thousand dollars today to come in this church that night. Scared to death. I did not know. I got a revelation. I did not know that the devil was meaner than, or, or bigger than the Lord is. Oh my God. I wouldn't come in. I, don't, I, I know people wouldn't go in that sanctuary over there. And who do we serve? Do we serve God or do we serve fear? For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. You know what that word means? Dumas. You know what Dumas means? It's, it's almost self-recreating power. Right? They say there is no they, they say there is no continuous uh, momentum machine. But they say it has to have an outside source. I don't even really think that's correct, but that's what they say. But what, what Douglas is, is it's a recreating power. It's a power that will break out and you just kaboom. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a Spirit of recreating power. A spirit that says greater than is he that's in me. A spirit that says, I will look to the hills from which cometh my hand. A spirit that says that if God be for me, who can be against me? We forget all these scriptures. And, and you know, hey listen, I'm not making light of the coronavirus. But I mean, it's like one in 300,000. Like one. One in 300,000. One and 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 America and we're running around all muzzled up. I wear the mask. I'm not against. I wore one today. I wore one in store. Just walking on. I put one on. I don't believe anything. I wasn't worried about them. I walked in Walmart the other day, running the boot down. He said, "Man, where's your mask?" I said, "Why?" Well, he said, "Ain't you worried about catching this stuff?" I said, "Well, you ain't got no faith in your mask, have you?" I said, I ain't worried about that. I said, your mask should be protecting you. Right? I mean, I want to be respectful. I'm going to be. But I'm not, I want to walk in the dunes. Help me sometimes. I'm going to walk in that self-recreating power that when I get up in the morning, it's going to be enough for in the morning. 
To know that God is for me and not against me. To know that God is going to help me through the day. To know that if I get it, I'm going to survive it. I think I had it in December last year. I think it's out. I took my last it, antibiotic. That one turns out. When I got on the plane. Virginia <laughs> when I got on the plane to go to Israel, I think I took my last antibiotic. Hey, it was a hot spot. Guess where? New York. You know what we did? We didn't hide from running with that word. Didn't we make it? You did? Oh, that's right. <laughs> did you get it? Okay. I was just checking my children. I don't think it goes that far down. I think it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> Set me some people went with us all the way all the way over to Tel Aviv. They shut down Bethlehem. We were, it was all over Israel. Nobody got it. We was crammed into places like this, meeting other busloads of people coming out of the woods, going in from all over the world. Nobody got it. Flew all the way back to New York City. Nobody got it. Flew all the way to Atlanta, Georgia. Nobody got it. Flew all the way to Nashville or Knoxville. Nobody got it. So I, the the thing that torments you that has not happened, we just stop it. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power. You got power over number one. Number two, love. And a sound mind. A sound mind says to me, I did did you just did you sit down and have a meet with God and say, God, this is what we're gonna be born, this is what I'm gonna do, this is what we, this is the plan we want to have to happen in our life. No. You you didn't have any choice. You are here by specific design. Right. Before he formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you and he ordained what you was going to be doing. So if he ordained that and he has a purpose for your life, then you don't need to worry about what the devil says about what it is. Or whether it be cancer. I just, I, I just got a new doctor. I forewarned her. I said, I fired a dozen of y'all. I said, leave the chicken alone. We'll get along just fine. I said, you start talking about fried chicken? I'm going to find me another one. I, I'm gonna, I ain't going to mess with you. She's asking me about my family history. She said, how about cancer? I said, they all died of cancer, but I ain't gonna die. I said, everybody had it. What? I said, everybody. I said, everybody had it. I said, but it was, I said, but it was from smoking, I think. They all smoking. I, and, and she said, well, I, I, I'm fixing to do some blood work. I don't know what. I, I said, do whatever you want to do. Don't matter. I ain't worried about it. I ain't gonna worry about it. Are you gonna worry about it? Listen, if my time's up, it's up. What can I do anyway? If your time's up, it's up, baby. But if it ain't, forget about it. Live and love and have have a good time. Have a sound mind. I'm gonna enjoy what life I got. I spent too much time worrying about what could happen if it didn't anyway. I'm gonna enjoy my life. I'm gonna have a good time. Yeah. Right? Right. Hey, I got this switch. Brother Brother Roger got to experience a little bit of I, I didn't act like play scared far out of me. I got this switch and the truck got there. One click, it goes 140 more horsepower than it's got. And what I didn't realize was I thought I had it on a lesser set, and I hit it up for another day, and like the lost it right up here in the middle of the road, Ben Roger did. He had, I keep on scared of naked. But we both scared to death. <laughs> Didn't clench a man up, you know what I'm saying, from ditch line to ditch line. Right? I'm going to enjoy life. Right? I'm going to flip that switch and blow black smoke at the back end of that truck. I'm going to have fun. Right? I'm going to win everybody I can. I'm going to let people sit and enjoy the Lord being my strength. Instead of walking around scared to death of what the devil might do. Fool you on the devil anyway. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Hey, his days is numbered. He knows it. That's why he's fighting like he's fighting. Yeah. Hey, and listen, if, if he could have, he would have. Yeah. Look at me. If he could have killed you, he would have already did it. Yeah. How old are you now? Not count today. Yeah. And he didn't kill you yet. And you still live it and still surviving and still thriving and still got groceries and still got gas and still got something to drive and got clothes to wear and have to. Why would we worry when God's got such a good turn? I think it offends God sometimes because God said, I, I've done everything I can. I've met every need. And, they, and they just we just go absolutely brain dead on God right in the midst of another trial. And all that the trial is and all that the test is is a place 
for God to prove himself real. The Bible said he looks throughout the earth seeking to prove himself real in our lives. He's looking for somebody that will distrust him. Yeah. Hey, I, some of y'all may and some of you may not know. Catherine Kuhlman. Anybody ever heard of Catherine Kuhlman? She's dead gone now. Catherine Kuhlman was a, a Baptist woman. Preacher. Imagine that. They don't believe her. She was one of them kind, right? And Catherine Kuhlman had miracles unbelievable in her ministry. And you know why? Because she just believed God would. She said, God always gives little Baptist girls stuff. The desires of the hearts, and the desire of my heart was for God's children to be healed. And everywhere she went, miracles on top of miracles. How is it that we'll go in, in doubt and faith in reverse and, and allow the bad If you keep believing it long enough, it's going to happen to you. But why can't we just go faith forward and just believe that God's for us and not against us? Just believe that God will answer our prayer. Just believe that He hears us when we cry out to Him. Amen. Just know that He's on my side and He's going to help me. And if I need it, I'm going to take care of it. Amen? If I need it, He's going to take care of it. How's He going to do it? That's up to Him. I don't care. Why should I worry about it? All right, sure. Amen. All right, let's jump back. Let's see if we can get back. Okay. It goes, the lesson goes to the love of a father. Galatians 4 19 said, my, my, my little children, of whom I travail in birth again unto Christ before men you. Did you get that? Let's slow it down just for a second. Let's, let's slow it down. He said, My little children. Come here, God's child today. Watch what he said. He said, Of whom I travail in birth again. He said, You are already born into the kingdom. You're already born into the kingdom. But you're having to be reborn, reborn again until Christ be formed in you. When Christ is in you, the hope of glory, then you realize that. God is taking care of your business. And the biggest thing the devil tries to do is try to make you fear and doubt so that he can take control of your life. Right? right? Uh, the lesson goes here. It says, thank God that he understands the hidden part within each of us. He understands the child in us. He speaks to our, our blanket, clutching, thumb-sucking, infantile need. In spite of our growth, he comes. Education and notoriety. He still speaks to the childhood issues of the aged heart. This is the ministry that only his father can give. Have you ever noticed that you are never grown up, or you are never a grown up to the ones who birthed you? I go over and see my mama. She said, come on in here, baby. I'm 290 pounds. That's a big baby. I mean, unless you have an elephant or something. Right? Come on in here, baby. Sometimes my daughter, she comes over, she'll be 30 years old. Well, she just turned 29. She'll come over and I'll sit down and she'll lay across the chair and just lay in the lap. Why? Because she knows she's my, that's my baby. Right? Brandon is 350 pounds. And I would love to see him sit on his mommy's lap. <laughs> that's it all, right? Is your baby still your baby? Mm -hmm. <laughs> No matter if I become the president of the United States. Amen. Amen. That's still your baby. All right, let's see. The Lord looks beyond our facade and sees trembling places in our life. He knows our innermost needs. No matter how spiritually mature we try to appear, He's still aware of that, lurk, uh, of that lurking in the shadows is a discarded candy wrapper from the child's desires. We just prayed on last night. The lingering evidence of some little temper or temptation that only the Father can see hiding within he is supposedly all grown up little child. Uh, you can learn some good life lessons and sometimes watching uh, Andy. I seen him the other day and I hope he had a buddy going to run off. I hope you seen that one. And he was going to run off somewhere and it was way off. I forget where he was going. <clears throat> So Andy just started figuring up the sandwiches he was going to eat. 
uh, and how many days it was going to take him to get there on foot. It was like 640 something sandwiches. You know, and the little boy all at once decided he wasn't ready. He, he was going to do it on his own, and we do that with the Lord. We, we act like we're all grown up. We know what we yeah. do. But you know what? I'm just like a little child. I'm holding on to him with everything in me. I don't know what we're going to do today. I don't know what's going to happen today at 11 o'clock or 10 30. I really don't. I believe God's going to move and show up. But you know what he's going to do? He's going to show up and he's going to help those that are in need in the building. But you know what? I don't, I don't really have a plan. I have some scriptures. And I and sometimes that don't even work out for me. Sometimes I have to take another scripture and go another way. But you know something? I'm not going to fear what's going to happen in the future. I'm just going to live for this moment and enjoy this moment. Right. It is he alone whom we trust to see the very worst in us. Yet still think the very best of us. You ever thought about that? He can hide from me and I can hide from you, but we can't hide from God. And he knows and he still loves us. How is that? How is that? Because see, see, we feel like this. If if the first thing the devil told me when I walked in the back of the Feast Text Church of God in 1993, the year of our Lord, I sat there and I had the mother had the Playboy earring button that year. And you ought to see me, son. I was sight to be hard to <laughs> But I was not hurt. <laughs> Sitting down back there and, and just got saved. The Lord and the devil said to me, He said, If they know what I know about you. And all at once I got afraid. And I thought, you know, I might have cut the hair so I look like the rest of these people in here. So, Amen. Amen. And, I, and, and you know something? The Lord knows anyway. And He loves us. He has a propensity to know all your dark, dirty little secrets. Yeah. And love you in here. Right. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. They would come get you. Yeah. Right. Got a bad right. 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 Anybody else? Well, move on. When the disciples asked Jesus to, to teach them to pray, the first thing he taught them was to acknowledge the Father of God. When we say our Father, we acknowledge His fatherhood and declare our sonship. Sonship is the basis of basis for our relationship with Him as it relates to the privilege of belonging to His divine family, right? And you know, this is the truth, and I just have to admit it. He made He's made me lie down. I ain't liked it. I've been mad about it. I kicked and screamed about it, but He's made me lie down. And put a little girl right there with me. Yeah. And he did. He did. He put that little girl, and she's talking so much. We went downstairs the other day, and I was getting ready to go do a funeral. Jerry was going to go and watch it for me. And she looked through the, through my office downstairs. I should have been smart enough to shut the door. There's the pink car. Shut the door real quick. And she done told everybody. They said, Sandy, gonna bring you the pink car. No. Paul. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right? I told her nanny the other day. She said, she said, what's Sandy gonna bring? Or is Santa Claus gonna bring you things? She said, no. I said, ask her who Sandy is. She said, who is Santa Claus? She said, Paul. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And then that little two-year-old girl. She has more faith than all us old grown up people running around here wondering. She knows Paul don't care. Mm -hmm. If Paul got to sell a farm, she's going to get a red little pink car. Doesn't got it. You know what? It's the same thing. What you're asking and believing for, you already have it. It's already there. God's already made the way. Yes. All you got to do is just believe He's your Father. He'll take care of it for you. That's the problem we have, though. We, we, are, we are in control of our destiny. We're going to make it happen, but don't work away. Yeah, okay, he said, when, when they asked to the, 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 teach them to pray, acknowledge God is your Father. That acknowledges your sonship. Uh, so knowing your Father helps you understand your own identity as a son or daughter. Greater still is the need to know not only whom my Father is, but how He feels about me. Ever made your daddy mad? Yeah. My daddy's got a sense of what about. He got a key. You know what I mean? I think I was about the third one. He killed two more just like me, made two more just like me. I was the only one that had no sense of it. And, and it is 
it, it is not good to deny a child the right to feel a father's love. In divorce cases, some women use the children to punish their ex-husband because of their broken covenant with the child's father. The mother may deny him the right to see his child. This is not good for the child. Every child is curious about the father. Philippians 14.8 14, 8 says, uh, Philip said unto him, show us the father as it suffices us. Philip didn't know who the father was, but he longed to see him. I can still remember what it was like to fall asleep watching television and have my father pick me up listless, sleep ridden, framed from the couch and carry me to the upstairs bed. I would wake up to the faint smells of his old spice cologne and feel his strong arm around me carrying me as if I weighed nothing at all. I never felt as safe and protected as I did in the arms of my father, that is until he died. And I was forced to seek a refuge in the arms of my heavenly father. Right. See, this that's the whole crux of this. Do you trust him as your father? You know why people have problems trusting God? Because their earthly fathers, a lot of them have left them. We coined in this generation a phrase called baby mama, which is ridiculous. Hey, Amen. Hey, I, listen, I, 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 I don't want to I, I don't come off as being cold hearted. But the, that, there's a lot of young men today, if they'd had the influence of a father, wouldn't be homosexual today. Some of them wouldn't be. But a lot of them modeled after their mother because they didn't have a dad. Yeah. It's the truth. Hey, and, 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 and I guess equally so in America, the African American young men, a lot of them never met their dad. They don't know who their dad is. That's right. One dear, dear friend of mine, I hope he's watching this morning. He's African American, and he come to church here for a while, but he's moved back home now. And and, and he's he's a good young man. You ever met in your life? And he's a good man. He's a smart, and intelligent fellow. But when he'd go home, his daddy would try to get him to go get drunk with him. His daddy is that. You know what I'm saying? And and the reason a lot of people don't know how to trust God to be their father is because their earthly father is not trustworthy. Right. When you say he's your father, then they back up and say, "Well." Wow, wow. Never had a good experience with the Father. Yeah. Right? Uh, and some of us did. But the problem that we have in the church today is, is releasing our cares to Him and saying, He is my Father. He's the one who's going to take care of this thing in my life. I'm not going to get healed except for Him. I mean, do you also think the money you have in the bank is because you work and you put it in the bank? That nice fine house you live in that five vehicles you drive, you really think you bought one? Nope. You really think it belongs to you? Nope. I seen a guy, he has to be, a, he, he, he's got to be a millionaire, and a dummy too, okay? He had a hundred thousand dollar, six, seven, quad cab, four wheel drive, dually bought truck, right? You know what he did with it? He dug a hole, and he covered, he covered it up with plastic, and he dug a hole, and he buried it all but the exhaust of the place where you get in through the hatch at the top. And he left it sitting in there a whole week. And then he fires the thing up. And all it's settling, the windshield's busted in on him and stuff. And the last part of that video I seen, he's, trying, he's out there on the backhoe, trying to dig it out and see what kind of damage that he, that he did. And, and in, the, in, the, in the same right, in the same right, he, 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 did, he, did, he didn't buy that. His dad had to buy it for him. But it didn't belong to him, so he didn't really worry about it. But do you, do you understand that he's always, he's, he's made the way for you and everything you have and everything that you are, it's become him anyway. And, and you, you got to understand, one day when you die, one day when you die, and your kids are going to find over it, one of them's going to steal it all, and I'm not speaking to nobody for the rest of their life. Right? <laughs> And you have to understand that all that stuff don't matter anymore. You don't own anything. You don't own anything. Hey, I got a house on the market. I got a house on the market right now. I got a house on the market right now. It was built 1950. 70 years ago. How many people owned that house for me? 70 years ago. Right? You don't own a house. You live in one by the grace of God that He gave you. 
don't have cars. Yeah, he don't have cars. Right? And he gave you what you got. Clothes you got. It's where it come from. Belt. No. From the Lord. Food's in your cabin. You didn't buy that. The Lord gave you. Everything that you have. If you see it that way, then you have you have an easier time trusting that he's going to take care of everything you need anyway. I'm sure I, I, I'm sure for some, the worst thing you could possibly thought of was getting the COVID. Can I just be honest with you? But Joe, when he got the COVID, I got a little scared. I prayed earnestly. I said, Lord, please touch my brother. And then all at once, it just came to me. I have to release him. To the care of the Father, and not worry. Because if I worry, then my prayers don't be answered. But if I just trust and believe, just believe, and go how deep God brought him out of it. Amen. 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 Amen.
Do you understand? If he was looking for a reason to kill you, you've already gave it to him. Yeah. I mean, not you, but somebody watching us. I know I have. I've given him more than enough reason to kill me. And he did. David cried out and said, Chastise me not in thine hot displeasure. You ever, you ever prayed that prayer? I have. Yes, sir. Yeah, an example of how God loves you. He's a lapse. He called them a skinhead generation. They were wandering in the wilderness. He took care of them. The clothes didn't wear out, but the shoes didn't wear out. He still provided for them. He said, no, no. Oh, oh. He didn't love them. He didn't love them. He didn't love them. He didn't love them. But he still took care of them. You know, think about, uh, I'm talking about Jonah when you said that. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Give you the instruction. He, ran, he runs off. You know the story is up in the belly of the whale. And the Bible said, the word of the Lord came again to Jonah. Think about uh, if you think about Samson, Samson done everything he could against God, ended up losing out. And they were making sport of him, and the Bible said his hair began to grow again. So if God's looking for a reason to get rid of you, he'd have done, done it. Right. He wants you to do what you're supposed to do. He wants you to stand up and have faith and believe God. Listen, why can't we just be the why can't we just be the generation that just believes God can move mountains? Why can't we be the ones that just believe that God loves us and He wants to heal His people? Why can't we just be the church that believes God wants to save sinners and see sinners saved? Listen, I know I know there's a great responsibility that rests on me, but you have equally the responsibility to believe that faith God's gonna save somebody today. Amen. Have you thought about it? You know what my neighbor told me today? I call my neighbor. That's his daddy, Mr. Roberts, we've been praying for. You know what he said? He said, I pray today, Pastor, that somebody gets saved in your church. Did you pray that today? I pray that church don't spill my coffee. So do I. We're going to close with this right here. Romans 2 and 4. It says, Or, the, or despise us out of the riches of his goodness and the forbearance of long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. You know what? Through trial and error, we're learning how to serve God. In, uh, in this world. You're learning, I'm learning. Why can't we, if we're, if we're going to, if we're going to fall for, let's fall from the side of faith. Well, why is it that we have to go at every time of the day? Why don't we just go to the hospital? Why would God? Hey, I, I can't help but watching. It. it might be. I was, in a, I was on a state Zoom meeting this week with I don't know how many hundreds of preachers across the state. State overseer, former general overseer. And they, they put forth a challenge to every district overseer plant one church, bring all the churches together, pull a, pull a couple out. So uh, I had I had some trouble with that. I texted the head man there and I said, hey, Calvin, we get a chance to talk to you about something. Calvin, I said, Fred, I said, I refuse not to do what you tell me. I said, you boss, if you want me to plant church, I'll plant church. I said, I got a church last Wednesday night I had two people show up. I said, I got a church right now. I said, at very best, there'd be 15 people show up on Sunday morning. I said, I got another ain't running 20 people. And I said, and I know the pastors and praying for them, and I'm talking with them. And I said, they're pulling their hair out, trying, trying to figure out how to grow their church. And I said, why would I go right in the midst of where they're at and plant a church and pull what little bit they got left out and shut them down to build another one? I said, why don't we just fix what we got? I said, why can't we just believe God's going to fill up what we got? And I said, sir, I said, you tell me to build another church. I said, we'll build you another. I said, that's what you want. We do it. But I said, it makes more sense to me to take these guys that are out there. I said, we, I said, we know God wants a church up because it's already built. And with that faith, knowing that there's already a, 
1974 or 5, they start building on this 76 and we're done with them. God wanted the church here. 1999, we finished that one over there. 2015, we moved in that one. God wants to do something here. He wants to heal. He wants to deliver. He wants to set the captive free. And we walk in like, oh, it's just so hard to build a church. It is. It is. God help it is if you're going to rely on your own resources and your own uh, living up. But if you just say, you know what, it's God's church. You know what I believe? And I pray, Lord, you said you added to the church today that such it should be saved. I said, God, I said, I'm looking for somebody to be saved today. My neighbor believes that he's a Baptist. Why can't we believe it? We got the Holy Ghost. Why can't we believe it? He said, I'm praying somebody gets saved to the church today, preacher. Why can't we believe that? Why can't we believe that somebody get it? You know, did God quit healing? Is that what happened? No. Why can't we just believe God do something we ain't never seen? Say, God, I don't know what it is, but I know you will do something big I ain't never seen. I don't even know how to believe for God because I ain't seen it, but show it to me. I don't think it. That's what we have to do. Anybody got a question or comment? <coughs> Nobody? We're about to wind this thing up, I think. That was it. Yeah. That's the last one in there for this year. All right. Anyway, uh, Let's uh, let's remember this, children. Y'all, walk in faith and not fear. Don't fear the devil. Sister Kathy Lawson used to Sister Kathy Lawson used to stand up, preach under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, and she'd say, "Fear not the devil, little children." God is in control. Amen. Amen. Anybody got a question, comment? Before I let you go, we finished it up. We're gonna start. Yes, sir. Whenever we go back with the. Stump the pastor. We're going to ask every classroom to come up with a couple of questions. Y'all be thinking about it. Give it to the pastor so we can uh, ask him some questions that we can stump him with. Every classroom is going to be coming up. Well, wait a minute. Don't give them to the pastor. Give them to me. <laughs> <laughs> right. I see the wheels turning. I know. But... Oh, she, she, she'll come up with her own. I'm pretty sure. Anyway. Thank y'all. All right. God bless you. Thank you for being this other school. Thank you.